everybody, and welcome back to yet another cracking edition of the Matt Brown Show. This is the Secrets of Fail series where we're talking to successful entrepreneurs and CEOs all about their epic business blunders. You know, the stuff they don't they won't put on their LinkedIn timeline. Yep, that stuff. And uh, with us in the hot seat today is none other than Eric Hansen. He is the founder and CEO of IWT Wireless. Eric, welcome to the show. Thank you, Matt. Great to have you here, bud. So you know what's coming. Uh, so let's uh, get on with the show, shall we? Uh, hit us up with the elevator pitch. Um, what exactly are you guys up to over there? Sure. Um, IWT is, has a relentless pursuit of innovation, um, enabling our partners and industries to provide transformational solutions. Uh, we make wireless systems to enhance safety, efficiency, and productivity. Uh, in, in, a, in an elevator pitch, we're in the dirty jobs business, as Mike would say, um, where we serve uh, niche markets in mining industrials um, with mission critical communication and tracking solutions. Um, so are these enterprise clients? Is that kind of the sweet spot or do you work with the whole s segment list? Yeah, they're, uh, mostly it's a B2B marketplace, so we sell directly to the miners. Some, in some instances, they're required to have systems for safety reasons, so it is partially regulated by federal, state, and local um, regulation and enforcement bodies. Uh, but for the most part, we sell on, uh, on a value proposition around safety, productivity, efficiency, and a connected workforce will we'll give you all those benefits. Amazing stuff, amazing stuff. Alrighty, let's get into the meat and the potatoes of this series. Uh, what is your epic story of fail for our audience around the world today? Well, this might be somewhat unique, but in 2011, a Fortune 100 firm approached us to acquire us, and that was our epic fail. Um, but it also turned into one of our, our a great story as well. Um, I can, I can, they approached us. We were a partner for them. Um, they uh, were interested in acquiring us. I didn't find, see it was a good cultural fit for, for our company and for my employees. It was a little early in the conversation to begin with. And, and through that failure, uh, they decided to take a different track and tr uh, sued our company for half a billion dollars. What? <laughs> How? How does that happen? Explain. <laughs> <laughs> How much time do you got? <laughs> I got all the time in the world for this story, mate. <laughs> so, um, so they um, they uh, approached us to acquire us, and because we were a technology partner uh, with them, um, they uh, put a valuation that I thought wasn't representative of, of our value, and and I had worked with them long enough. Uh, that I knew that the cultural fit with my team was not going to be appropriate either. Um, so um, <laughs> when we said thanks, but no thanks, and that we were going to go to market directly, they sued us um, uh, with, you know, three different law firms and, and, and threw everything at us. A sheriff showed up at my office to serve me papers. And it was roughly about a $480 million lawsuit where they actually sued six uh, people, myself included, personally, as well as the company. Um, it was a year of hell, <laughs> oh 2012. Gosh. 2012, that's, uh, that's crazy. Um, so tell me, like, what actually happened in the end of that story? Well, it's, it's the, the reason why I like telling is that it's a David versus Goliath uh, kind of story, um, and we um, you know, we obviously had our own attorneys, but but we were a small company at the size, probably about uh, eight million in revenue at that point. Mm. Um, we always knew it was a risk, but uh, it was definitely a David versus a Goliath story. They had done a lot of things. Um, you know, this was a, a, a kind of dealing with a big two thousand pound gorilla. And they just thought they could bleed us dry from cash, and and through discovery depositions, we 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 got enough information about their strategy. Was their strategy was just to bleed us of cash, and pick us up for pennies on the dollar. Um, fortunately for us, the 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 judge at the time was uh, Justice Brinkema out of the what they call the Rocket Docket in the East Coast 
her name might be familiar because she put Zachariah Masari away, the 9-11 terrorist, years ago. Um, and she saw through it, and the magistrate saw through it, uh, and called the spade a spade. So we were heading to um, court about 10 months, 11 months later, and millions of dollars spent on lawyer fees. And they acquiesced in... Um, we had a countersuit at the time for about $30 million, um, so, which had real teeth in it. And um, and we essentially acquired the whole business from them for pennies on the dollar. <laughs> Funny how the, so the wheel always turns, right? <laughs> well, so usually 90% of the, 95% of the time that would win in the big, large company's favor. We were just really blessed and fortunate that and we stood by our guns and, um, you know, faced our fear and pushed through it. Mm -hmm. So, Eric, when you think about that whole experience now with hindsight being, a, you know, si perfect science, what um, what did you learn from that? Like what that whole experience, like what are some key insights or lessons that you now take forward with you into the business? Well, I think number one is w one of our values is is to make a positive impact on our community, our customers and our employees and stakeholders. And, and, and that message really resonates with me. We, we make great products and I have a great team. And I think um, the first lesson was, um, if anyone in the future would wanna acquire our business, if it's not a positive impact for my employees and our culture, we're not gonna do it. So, um, and, and this, the, you know, the way this ended up just reinforced that message. Um, the other one is, um, you know, face your fears, uh, take a risk um, when you're right and you have integrity and, and um, you know, hope, unfortunately, the legal system works in a little bit that it's a rowing, a flowing river you fall into and you can't swim against it. But um, there is justice sometimes. Um, and, and it, honestly, there isn't a fear I have besides death and taxes I'm not willing to face at this point. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 at the time we were a 15 year business and I had all my equity and all my net worth tied up in this business. And, um, you know, I would have lost everything pretty much. Um, but we stood together, our team stood together by them suing six of my employees, singling them out, which they knew they hadn't done anything while it actually brought our entire team together. So mm -hmm. You know, stick to your guns. It 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 looks bad. It 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 is bad when you're in there, but it's worth it's worth pushing through it. Mm -hmm. So, Eric, if you could get into the Matt Brown Show time machine and maybe do something differently, what would you do differently, and why? Wow, that's a tough one. I I've I've run this out so many times in my head. Um, I probably would have never partnered with them in the first place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a it was a partnership of convenience because um, our sponsor at the time wanted a big company that had a large presence partnered with a, a technology company like ours. Uh, we were a small company at the time. We didn't have the resources probably to take the the product to market the way it was taken to market. Um, so, um, you know, I I probably would have. Um, had a lot more scrutiny on any of our our JV um, contracts because there was some there was some gray areas that would have made it easier to kind of have a uh, um, have a solid solid position that never would have gotten to this this far. Um, but you know we we tried to arbitrate. We tried to negotiate um, in good faith. We actually, uh, for a year preceding, um, you know, told them our intention was go to market directly, but we would continue to support them. So so it's kind of it's kind of hard to say we could have done much different, um, except those couple things I mentioned. Mm -hmm. So Eric, what is your advice to other entrepreneurs or CEOs out there about the importance of failure or the role of failure in becoming successful in business? It's the only way you learn. I, it's, um, I have a horrible story, unfortunately, that just happened recently. I have a friend who had a, a business that um, 
things got really bad for him and he took his own life. So it's really been hard um, to the last month or so. Um, and he wasn't really sharing with anyone. We had just kind of had a mancation together with about five or six of us that had grown up through the early days at Motorola. And, you know, I've, I'm friends with a, a bunch of CEOs and, and my only suggestion to them was it's never that bad. It's, it may seem that bad in the moment. Um, and I tell my team all the time, um, fall forward fast. I mean, learn through mistakes. Don't repeat them, but mistakes are a way to learn. And if you never take a risk, you will never create anything great. So you have to take a risk. And I've had to forgive myself about that as well, because I've had so many failures <laughs> through my career in, in big companies, Motorola, GE, Ericsson, as well as my, my you know, I'm essentially, uh, I don't have a formal MBA, I'm an engineer, but I learned, I got an on the job MBA um, in how to run a business and how to manage and lead people. So um, give yourself some grace. What you're trying to do is tremendously hard as an entrepreneur in, in, the U, in the US or in any country or any field. So there's a reason why, you know, 80, 90% of small businesses fail. So pick yourself up by your bootstraps. Don't stop innovating. Um, and, but, but always know that, that it's only through failure that great things happen. Mm. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm sorry to hear about your, your friend. That, that's, uh, that's a tough one. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've had a few Navy SEALs on the show and like Leif Babin, Rock Denver, and a few others. Um, and they, I always ask the question like, you know, is, and cause they're all entrepreneurs now, right? And then I said to them, you know, so how similar is building a business to actually, or the life of an entrepreneur to actually going to war? Um, and they said it was pretty much the same, except that there's no bullets and you're not gonna die, you know? <laughs> uh, but, the, but I think as entrepreneurs, to your friend's point, I think we sometimes feel like we're going to die you know what i mean like the this, yes. this and i think i remember like my first business when that failed i was because i sold my first one so i was like tw in my 20s so i thought i could walk on water and uh, <laughs> luckily the <laughs> luckily the universe is going to fix all that for me um in the next one because that died and i remember just feeling like the world's biggest f you know yeah like just major L, imposter you know. syndrome right oh my god imposter dude. Syndrome. and like and then i didn't realize it at the time and and you know i founded 14 companies over the last 25 years have sold a wow. few but a lot of those died and i had and in the process of businesses dying i i learned that when a business dies it's not you that's dying it's just a business you understand yeah and i think that that slight nuance in perspective is actually how you disassociate from uh, from really, really low, tough lows, you know, like you, your credit, you, you, you got too much debt, your revenues on where they need to be, your people oh. are leaving, like whatever that is, right? And you can't talk to anyone about it because you're too proud, you know, uh, all these sorts of yeah. things. And, and and when you're in that hellhole, you know, it's tough. You're man. alone. You feel yeah. like you're alone. Yeah. 100 percent alone. Um, and yeah. that's why I always say, like, you know, fuck your pride. Like, go and ask for help. Like, phone a mate. Like, phone Eric. Phone Matt. Like, do yeah. something. You know. Um, but, uh, but it's just a business that's dying. It is. You know what I mean? It is. It's not you, even though it's your baby, it's not you. So let it go. Um, and it's a very powerful, um, shift in perspective. I think it is, it is, you know, I, I tell uh, all my friends that are entrepreneurs and CEOs, I said, you know, you forgive your employees, you forgive your kids, you forgive your, you know, wife and friends when they slight you, the last person you typically forgive is yourself. And, and, you know, none of us are, were, there, there's no education or experience that could, could have prepared me for a $480 million lawsuit. <laughs> you know, it's just, all you do is you, you put your shoes on every day and you take one step and you hope that you take that step in the, in the right direction and, and you learn from it. And, and honestly, the reason why we, David was able to slay Goliath in this example was because I had failed several times before and I on projects. And I'm like, OK, I'm not going to do this again. I'm not going to put my company in this situation again. And, um, you know, eventually, I mean, that's where wisdom comes from and experience. <laughs> mm, absolutely, Mace. Absolutely. 
Well, uh, Eric, that unfortunately does conclude your time in the hot seat. I uh, appreciate you coming on to the show and lending your perspective. Really appreciate you. Love your story, by the way. Um, Thank you. And uh, that's why <laughs> I got a lot to say about those pricks. You know what I mean? Like, who does that <laughs> shit? You know what I mean? Like, come on. Like, what kind of a person does that or team? Oh, uh, you know what I mean? It's like, uh, over, uh, over a beer sometime in Denver, we can, yes. we can swap stories. Yeah, or maybe some <laughs> apres ski in the winter, which is coming. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. That sounds great. <laughs> Let's do a ski trip. <laughs> Let's do it, brother. I'm in there. I'm in there. Snow, snowshoeing. Let's go. Well, look, um, Eric, thanks so much, buddy. And everybody else, we'll see you again soon. Ciao for now. Thank you, man.